Hey everyone, I have some really interesting news about a study published earlier this month in the journal Nature about the evolution of bilaterian organisms and centralized nervous systems, like spinal cords. There's still a lot of mystery surrounding the evolution of our nervous systems. Its evolutionary origins remain undefined and poorly understood. The nerve cord that runs along the vertebra, along the spine, or along the back is a defining feature of bilaterian animals. These are animals that display a bilateral symmetry. They have two clear sides, left and right, as well as a head end and a tail end, and a back side and a belly side. This is in contrast to radially symmetric animals, like the sea anemone or a jellyfish, which have a top and a bottom, but no front or back. They don't have a head or a tail. The study authors write about nervous systems having condensed from diffuse, undifferentiated networks like those in jellyfish into those kinds of uh, nervous systems with thick cords, like a spine and the nerve bundles that project off of it that root through the limbs to provide sensation. They comment that because of similarities between these condensed nervous systems, it's been theorized that they were possibly derived from a common ancestor. However, when the researchers studied the molecular patterns in the nerve cords of a wide range of these primitive, bilaterial animals, they found no conserved nerve patterns. From rotifers and xenocelomorphs to ribbon worms to ringworms to brachiopods, they found different molecular regionalizations, or differences in the cell scale expression of various enzymes and signaling molecules. The conclusion that the researchers come to is that their findings, and I quote, restrict the use of molecular patterns to explain nervous system evolution, and suggest that the similarities in dorsoventral patterning and trunk neuroanatomies evolved independently in bilateria, unquote. Uh, that was kind of a, a technical, dense sentence, you know, it was quite a bit to break off and chew, so let me kind of explain it a little, a little more simply. What they found was different chemicals and different physiologies being expressed in the nervous system of all of these different types of animals. And these differences are distinct enough and fundamental enough for them to be evidence that a condensed nervous system evolved multiple times, independently, in each of these lineages. This has some really fascinating implications. If condensed, centralized nervous systems evolved independently, multiple times across the animal kingdom, what does that say about life? Some might suggest that it implies life tends towards some kind of neural centralization. Perhaps a centralized nervous system is just more efficient at sending signals. Perhaps it's more conducive towards uh, the organism's awareness and reactivity. Whatever the case, a centralized nervous system seems to be selected for by the forces of natural selection. Let me take this implication a little bit further uh, into kind of theoretical territory, because I think that this has implications for alien life. Do you think that this could imply that other planets with animal life will tend towards having centralized nervous systems of their own? In light of this recent study, I think that that's a very serious and likely possibility. It seems like this evolutionary priority of the centralized nervous system might also hint at a priority for centralized brains. Maybe it hints at a priority for sentient life forms with singular brains, perhaps with a singular experience of individual consciousness, that should we one day be able to communicate with aliens, we might be able to relate to them and understand them and empathize with them. How interesting is that?